Here we are working with Pygame once again, which is a module for Python for creating video games. Working with a base script here that I always start off with. I have a video and this script in a link in the description, so check that out if you haven't already. It just saves me time from typing this every time I do a Pygame tutorial, because uh, we are limited on time here on YouTube. Um, so today we're going to basically create uh, a polygon shape. So far we've gone over creating lines, or drawing lines, uh, drawing elliptical shapes, and a polygon is anything with, uh, well, more than two sides. Uh, so triangles, rectangles, squares, uh, hexagons, pentagons, uh, so forth and so on. So um, let's get started. This is going to be uh, very simple, but we'll play with it a bit. Uh, right here before the Pygame display update, and I'm just going to put it up here in the main section of our script. In normal cases, if you're going to want to animate or change colors as it moves around, if you're going to do anything dynamic with it, it will normally go down the while loop, but we're just going to keep this very simple. And what we're going to do is we're going to say Pygame.draw. What are we going to draw? We're going to draw a polygon. We are going to draw it onto our screen, which is our object we created right here, which is our Pygame display, which is basically our window. And uh, then we're going to give it a color, which is an RGB uh, set of colors. Uh, so they can be anywhere from 0 to 255. It goes red, green, and then blue. And then we need to set a, at least three sets of coordinates here. So we've got, there are going to be three sets of two numbers divided by commas, uh, or separated by commas, and um, it's going to be left and then down, so uh, basically top and left. Um, so what we're going to do is, we're going to say here, we'll start off with something like uh, 50, comma, 10, we'll say. And then we're going to say... Uh, 100 comma we'll say 50 then we'll say two hundred comma I don't know 25 and we do want to put those numbers inside these square brackets now if we start up our script and we run it. Oh, we have to make it executable. So change mod plus x in the name of our script. Then dot slash in the name of our script. And there you go. You can see we have our Pi game window here. And we have a triangle because we set three coordinate points here, here, and here. And it's kind of a pink color because we had mostly uh, uh, red and blue and just a little bit of green in there. So first things first, let's, uh, although we've gone over this before, let's have a look at our colors here. If we were to change this to say 25, so we're lowering uh, red, which was this full strength red that you could have, it will give us more of a purplish blue, and actually blue is the strongest color here, so we're probably going to get quite a blue color. There you go. So we have a blue triangle now. Uh, we can also change the coordinates. Let's change one of these. We'll change this one that says 100. We'll change that to 400. How about that? And we actually got almost like a very thin looking line, but it's a very, uh, just the way we put the uh, coordinates, it's very, uh, a very flat triangle. Uh, let's change that 50 value to, we'll say 350. Save that, run it again, and there you go. You can see our triangle is much uh, wider now because we moved that last point way down to 350 pixels down from the top of the screen. Let's close that up. Uh, another thing we can do here, let's move this down a little bit, is instead of putting all the uh, coordinates right here, we can create a variable which will kind of clean things up a little bit. We'll just call it poly p, but it's a variable, so within reason you can name it whatever you'd like, and we'll just take these coordinates we already have right here, we'll set that variable equal to those. Then what we can do is we can erase the coordinates from here, and we'll put our variable there, so poly p. 
we'll run our script again and we get the same exact output. It's just we're using a variable instead of the coordinates directly, which allows for better control manipulation further down the line. Now, so far we've made a triangle because we've used three points, which gives us three corners. Uh, let's make a rectangular shape by adding another set of coordinates. Now, depending on where we set these coordinates, we may get a rectangular shape or we may get like what would look like two triangles because we're we're crossing at the center, and I'll show you what I mean right here. I'll just think of some random numbers. I'll say three, oh, sorry, 300, and we'll make this one 50. Let's see what happens when we run that. And there you can see it kind of looks like we have two triangles connected at the center, where really it's a uh, rectangle but we have the coordinates flipped here where these ones should be over here and these ones should be over there. Um, so let's quickly look at this. And let's set this one equal to uh, 100 and see how that affects it. So there we go, we moved uh, one of our points back over here. Let's take this coordinate that's up here and move it further down. We'll get more of a, a rectangular shape then, not a very balanced. I guess it's not a rectangle because rectangles would have even corners. Our angles would all be the same. What would you call uh, a quadgon? Would it be a quadgon? I hope I don't sound stupid saying that. I don't know. Um, it's a polygon of some sorts because it's got multiple sides. Anyway. Um, we want to move this one down some, so let's change this coordinate to 100. Or, that's actually probably the Y coordinate. No, I did it right. There we go, so now we've got that. Let's move it down a little bit further. And at this point I'm just playing around, obviously. Uh, if I wanted to make a rectangle, I can just set some of the coordinates uh, similar to each other. So there we go, we've got uh, a four-shaped side, a quadgon, as I'm calling it for right now. But let's make, a, let's make a uh, pentagon. Five sides. We'll just add another set of coordinates here. Uh, we'll set. Um, how about? We'll go 300, and don't forget to put these inside parentheses, comma, and we'll say 200 right there. Once again, we might get a funny shape. There we go. So it is kind of a pentagon. It's just the points dip in instead of out. I don't know if that would still be considered a pentagon. It still has five sides. I need to brush up on what my shapes are called. Uh, let's change this to 500 and see what happens. Ooh, we got all twisted up there. Let's change that back to 50, but change the 100. To 300. There we go. So we're just playing with different shapes here. You get the basic idea. Uh, these are useful for drawing stuff. I mean, most of the time when I'm creating games, I use uh, images and I just load images and draw them to the screen. But these do have their uses for creating designs, patterns, and colors. Um, like if you're going to be making a menu, you may just want to make a uh, square of some sort, um, which there is a option for that. You wouldn't actually have to use the polygon, but you get the basic idea. Uh, you, the use of it base, is based on your creativity. I mean, game creation is an art. It's not just technical like a lot of programming is. Um, it's visual and it's, it's, it's um, uh, I don't want to say vocal, but uh, it's visual and, and you got sounds and music. And um, so it's an art. And the more creative you are, uh, the better your game's going to be. And I'm just trying to provide you with the tools that you need to express yourself in your art. So... I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Please visit my website, filmsbychris.com. There's a link in the description as well as a link to uh, a post on this video, which will have 
uh, this script that I just created today in there that you can download and play with. Uh, but I also recommend typing it out yourself um, just to get in the habit. That's how you learn just doing repetitive and repetitive uh, typing. So I hope that you have a great day.